Welcome to Richter's video. We're pleased to present this short video to help you experience a whole new world of herbs and veggies at Richter's. Seeds U is a project to preserve food plant diversity by encouraging gardeners to grow rare plants that might otherwise be lost in the face of inexorable modernization and loss of cultural traditions. In this video, we introduce Joseph Simcox, plant explorer extraordinaire, the man who inspired the Seeds U project. So this is the entrance of the incredible Valley de Might. And this is where some of the most beautiful palm trees in the entire world grow in profusion because this is a UNESCO nature reserve. Tomorrow morning I'm going to go inside this deep dark forest and hopefully see some of the amazing Coco de Mer fruits. These are some of the largest fruits in the plant world. And it is of course to be said that it's mysterious because centuries ago people didn't even know where these nuts came from. It wasn't until around the 1700s that a French expedition came here and actually found the source of the incredible nuts. It's not exactly to be philosophical that one has to contemplate where the future will take us as human beings on this planet. In a certain sense, when people talk do good and talk about optimism, they're kind of negating the fact that the Earth in a sense takes care of itself. The destruction of man is indeed an implication for our own time, but what real teleology, the end effect, we will have as a species on the planet is yet to be seen. That said, we've done a lot of destroying, at least in a visual capacity. We've torn apart forests, we shredded the planet, and we're pretty concerned about it. But cataclysmic events have happened that are far greater than man's condensed efforts. And these have changed the planet, but they haven't wiped out life. The diversity and the spice of life is something which intrigues me. It's been about two and a half hours that I've been climbing here looking for Medusagini apositifolia, the jellyfish tree. Haven't found one. I've been scanning all the vegetation, doing my best to discern its particular foliage, and I have not succeeded. So if I keep walking around here, maybe for another hour, then I'm going to basically have to go back because I have another planned uh, hike on the other side of the mountain looking for some rare species of herbs, and patients, begonias, and a couple species in the family of the nettles, urticaceae. In this, this particular case, if I go ahead and show you where I'm at, you can see that it's quite a place. I mean, the vegetation, unique, has a kind of exotic look to it. Six species of palms which grow only here on the Seychelles. The invaders, such as this cinnamon tree here. And then looking down over this granitic boulder called a glassy's formation, you can see the valley below, which goes into Grand Anse Bay down there. Now, I've been hiking up here because this is the supposed locality of the jellyfish tree. And so I'm going to keep looking. If I have a big hoot, you'll definitely know that I found it. Here I am on what's called Trois Frères Trail in Morne de Seychellois National Park. Just taking a break because I climbed up the first stint of the mountain. We're getting up into what's called the cloud forest. But anyway, I have a few observations that I like to make out here in the forest because it's quite quiet, nice location, and a perfect place to make the points that I'm going to make. Last night I had the opportunity, if I would say, to dine with the science advisor to the president of the Seychelles. Now this was quite an interesting meeting. He was an educated man. As he uh, told me his qualifications, four masters and a PhD in biochemistry. So he was a very interesting young man, probably around 35, 36 years old. As we got into some of the topics that were relevant to the purpose of the dinner, it became clearly evident that a lot of the so-called problems of these small nations are in fact fostered in certain ways by the people who are in charge. Case in point, one of the things that's of concern to me about uh, small nations, and especially island nations, is food security. In the case of the Seychelles, a good 80-90% of the food is actually imported from abroad, which is a very dangerous situation we, when we consider that the country is essentially at the will and disposition of the economies of the world, 
their own economy, and the willingness of other countries to supply them food in case of a crisis. So this is a very difficult situation to be in, and it's one that worries me greatly. So we talked about food security and what ways that could be amended, and it was my observation that with a population as small as 80,000 people, that the Seychelles could quickly become self-sufficient with food production. It's a tropical paradise. You see me here at about uh, 350, 400 meters elevation. I'm dripping with sweat. It's a tropical environment, not too far south of the equator. So there is an incredible possibility and potential for this small nation to take care of itself. What that entails is something more complicated because general agricultural knowledge won't be sufficient to take a place like this out of its necessity and uh, reliance on other uh, countries. And the only way to do that is by diversity. The word biodiversity goes around quite often nowadays with few people actually considering what that diversity is or what it means. Diversity with crops is something which I have studied for many, many years, traveling all over the globe. It's my conclusion that a very and large ample species range is what is necessary to assure security. Because what actually we're considering is uh, evading any type of fault, any type of crop failure. And that means we have to have lots of different plants that are useful and reliable in the most extreme conditions, the absolute crisis point. So the food security then can be, re can be reached, and especially with a population, as I mentioned, of the Seychelles so low. But my good uh, dinner partner explained that there's some complications to that. First of all, there's an unwillingness on the part of the major industry of the islands, the hotelery, to participate in purchases for locally produced uh, produce. Reason apparently being, as suggested by the science advisor, was that people who uh, rely upon imported produce have come to appreciate the marketing savvy of those who market it. And hence, they're much happier to buy a banana with a little blue sticker that says Chiquita than a local variety that is not only cheaper, but in fact tastier. So where does this all lead to? Well, in my, in my evaluation, it's a little bit of crock, and the reason is because I can't see why a hotel wouldn't be interested. Now, there are some specific things which need to be mentioned here, the specific things that need to be mentioned. There are private interests. There's a lack of initiative. There's a lack of passion. Passion goes a long ways in solving problems, but it can be done. When I was four years old, I was very disappointed because the white rice I was planting in little flats of mud wasn't growing. When I was seven years old, I asked my parents for a birthday gift, squash, Hubbard squash, banana squash, and kushal. Forty years later, I'm still traipsing all over the world, collecting food plants in jungles and forests and deserts and fields, and doing so because I believe it's of an urgent importance. When I approached Richter's in Canada, I came up with an idea to share these food plants with peoples of the world. When we brainstormed with a family, Emma, the youngest daughter of the family, came up with a name called Seed Zoo. And I think that really is important because she said that it reminded her of Noah's Ark, a way of saving things for the future. So when you grow seeds from Seed Zoo, you can remember Noah's Ark, and you can also think that it's a way of sharing the cultural food plant heritage of the world with future generations. And my job, a botanical explorer, will be satisfied because I've shared a little bit of this with the rest of the world. At Richter's, it's not just a garden, it's a whole new world. For herb plants, seeds, veggies, and more, visit us at richters.com or call 1-800-668-4372.